Hey guys, Eric Ani here from MechanicalHub.com. We're here in my shop. Today's video is all about heat pump water heaters, the Ream hybrid heat pump water heater. Stay tuned because at the end of this video, after we talk about a whole bunch of cool technology built into this, we're gonna give you some pro tips you can bring to your job site and make a big difference for your customers. Today's video is brought to you by Ream. Welcome to the Build Show, stay tuned. All right, guys, I got Brian Foy from Formation Sales. Brian, you guys are the rep here for Ream in the Twin Cities. I've been working with you guys for a number of years. You got a great training center. We did a video on that for the Build Show a couple of years ago. Check it out, it's on my channel. Brian, Ream has been making uh, heat pump water years for a number of years, isn't that correct? It is, yeah, we've been making them since, or Ream has, since 2008. And this is like the sixth generation product right here. So we've learned a lot over the years. It's a great product already. I've been putting in uh, quite a few of them over the last couple of years for my customers. They've been very happy with them. I've learned a ton about the technology and how a heat pump water heater works. Let's just give people a real quick rundown. This portion of the, the tank here, we've got a, the top part is a heat pump behind this shroud. Very cool. It's kind of like what's in your refrigerator in a sense. Basically. And yeah. then you've got a tank water heater below, all right? This heat pump is actually gonna capture energy out of the atmosphere, wherever this is installed or wherever it's drawing air from. It's gonna transfer that energy through refrigeration process into the water through the sidewall of the tank. There's a mm -hmm. heat exchanger that wraps this steel tank. Correct. It's really cool stuff, actually. Mm -hmm. I think it's fun. Also, if you look at it, there's two access panels on the front of it. These behind these are just our standard uh, 4,500 watt or depending on the size, heating elements, electric resistance heating elements. So this portion of the water heater is just like any other electric water heater that Rheem makes. But now we can combine operation, whether it's heating elements or heat pump, and we can get that hybrid heat uh, water heater. That's what makes this a hybrid. Exactly. There's a few different operating modes. I think there's five of them. Correct. So Correct. we can control how this operates or how we're heating the water through five different operating modes. I know the first one to be energy saver, and that's what it comes set up in the control from the factory, is that correct? Right, right. And then what's next after energy saver? Uh, well, you could go to heat pump only mode. Okay. Uh, you also have the high demand mode. Uh, if you have an especially you know, high demand period, say in the morning when everybody's up taking showers, then you can, you can actually go to electric only mode and uh, vacation mode. Okay, so the energy saver mode, the default mode, that's gonna prioritize the heat pump. It also allows the water heater, if there's a higher demand, not the high demand mode, but if, if it sees the temperature not recovering fast enough or a bigger demand on the water heater, it can kick in one of the elements and run them simultaneously, is that correct? Correct, correct. Okay, what is high demand mode though? Like it's different from the energy saver mode. How, how do we differentiate that? Is it run them both at the same time? to get to no, prioritize it's, it's going to run the the uh, the heat pump feature and the electric elements at the same time to focus on the optimum amount of hot water that you can get out of it so a little bit more energy used to do that mm -hmm. because we know a couple of facts and figures about this when we're running the heat pump itself and just heat pump only mode that when you compare that to a standard electric resistance water heater, Ream states that you can save up to 75% in energy costs Correct. by using just the heat pump itself. Mm -hmm. So really cool there. And then of course that being one of the operating modes, heat pump only, right? Correct. Okay, mm -hmm. and so that is gonna take a little bit, it's gonna lengthen the recovery time if we're in heat pump only mode because it's, it doesn't, it isn't able to heat as fast as maybe an electric element could, but it's gonna do it with way less energy, even over the longer runtime period, is that correct? Mm -hmm. And then vacation. So a lot of people leave and they don't realize, they leave for a week or two, they take that spring break, they don't realize they can actually turn this thing down into kind of like a sleep mode, a vacation mode. Mm -hmm. It heats the water heater, water up to a certain temperature. I think it was like 65 degrees or so. Sure, yeah. It doesn't allow it to sit idle. It does keep it a little bit warm so that when you've scheduled that, you can then get a faster, quicker recovery when you return home. Correct. Okay, and then you, you stay in the electric only mode, right? So yeah. that's just gonna prior, it's not gonna utilize the heat pump. It's gonna just use the heating elements itself. Yeah. Yeah. One of the higher cost modes, I would imagine, to operate. Correct. I mean, you keep in mind, we sell these things throughout the United States. So in different parts of the United States, you might want to just run it in heat pump only mode. In fact, Ream makes one of these that doesn't even have the elements in it and it operates on 120 volts and 
it's sold primarily in areas where, you know, they don't, you know, it doesn't get real cold. So that or they uh, could be set, they could be outside. You know, you go down right. south, a long ways from here in Minnesota, and you can actually see water heaters out in the carport or in the back of the house outside. That's crazy to us. Yeah, oh it? yeah, absolutely. <laughs> it's so yeah. cool though, because especially with a heat pump, why not do that? Take advantage of oh, all sure, that. Oh sure, all the savings. Yeah, all that energy that's in the air and the savings and operating. How do you control that though? I think that's what we really want to talk about next in this video. So Ream has an EcoNet app that you can, that a homeowner can install, that a contractor can install and have on their phone to help set these up. Absolutely, yep. And walk us through how that operates. Do you have an app, the app running and connected to a water heater yourself? I do, we have uh, a heat pump water heater in our lab at Formation Sales and uh, I'm hooked up to that one with the Econet app. So all you would need is just connecting to like a Wi-Fi and you can connect the Econet and then you pull up the, you, you get the Econet app on your phone through you know, the apps and then you install that, register your name and the address and then you can have access to this very handy app. And on the app, you'll be able to see what temperature your water heater is operating at or what it's set at. You'll be able to see how much hot water is available. It shows you a picture of the tank there. You can check other things like scheduling for this and you can actually put together a schedule where let's say in the morning everybody's getting up and showering and you want to program the water heater to be set at the high demand mode to be able to take care of that time period. Then, then you can set it to go back to energy saver mode a little while after that. That makes a uh, ton of sense. Oh, so, absolutely. Especially with houses where you've got, well, any household, of course, but when you've got a higher demand, you got maybe you got a couple kids getting ready to go to school, you got a couple, you know, parents, and however that household is made up, you've got a bigger demand and higher uh, demand for domestic hot water in typically beginning of the day. Why not absolutely. set it? That's something I learned today, guys. This is actually really interesting to me. It's not something that I've been doing with my installations. I've been setting up in the energy saver mode, the default mode, and it's been working out for my customers, but this is actually really great information. Getting this scheduled in the app, you basically only have to do it one time. Once you've got the kind of that time frame figured out, what's gonna work best for your house? Oh yeah, it's like scheduling your furnace. Yeah. You know, to come on at different temperatures. And so you could do that, so you have, and you can put it into a high demand mode, say if you have some company coming over, you know, some other guests in the home or something. So the scheduling is a very nice feature on, on the app. And you can also go in the app and pull up the health of the different aspects of your water heater. Well, wait, what does this, what do you mean by that? Let's say you wanna find out, you know, how your elements are doing. You know, you, you could go to the health app that pulls up this part. It's gonna tell you how your elements are operating. Okay. And here, you know, by these uh, codes, if you, the more green, you know, it's the elements are still operating very well. The compressor life is normal. In this particular case, if you had the leak sensor hooked up, which this has a leak sensor on it, so if it detects any leaking, it's gonna notify you on the app. Also, this one has a shutoff valve, an automatic shutoff valve called leak guard. And so if it starts to leak after a certain point, it's gonna shut the incoming water off to the, to the water heater. And, and it's all also of this can let be accessed you know. through the app. All of it can be accessed here. Yes. Does, it, does it notify the, the homeowner that the, sh the water has been shut off because there was a leak? It does, Detective? yeah, so you have all that information right here. So then you'd be able to contact your plumber, let them know there's a problem and you can have it taken care of without kind of before it becomes thing. a huge emergency. Exactly, that could, that could save uh, property damage potentially, it could it'd keep you online and operational without any much exactly. downtime at all. Yeah, exactly. And so the app is free, I would imagine, but the is there is any free. monitoring costs or anything like that? No, there's no cost with it at all. You don't have to sign up or pay a monthly fee or anything like that. It's just, it's a free service. As long as it's hooked up to your Wi-Fi, you can access it. I was gonna tell you also that there's a usage report you can pull up. So you can look at, at your hot water usage and also your kilowatt hours of electricity, you know, seven days, 30 days, or 12 months. And, and you can kind of compare that to what you get back from maybe, you know, the, the utility company or the, or the electric company. So there's a lot of nice uh, features on the Econet app that help to uh, make this operate most efficiently and, and give you the best performance. That's actually really cool. I love the scheduling aspect of it. Again, I knew that you could do the, the vacation mode. I knew that you could access and change the modes through the app, which makes a lot of sense. It seems intuitive to me as a contractor, but I hadn't even given it a second thought that if you look at and try to optimize 
this performance, to get the absolute most out of the water heater, mm -hmm. lowest operating costs whenever possible to get the most hot water out of it. You can do that by just analyzing how these different operating modes might benefit the customer. Of course, a lot of these decisions are probably going to be made by the customer, right? Right, yeah. I mean, I'm, as a plumbing contractor, more likely to leave it in its energy saver mode, just the default mode that it comes with, because Ream has decided, like, this is probably the best operating yeah. mode to start with, mm -hmm. and they're going to hopefully give the best user experience under that mode. As for the plumber's perspective, I can I can be confident in leaving the job that they're going to be at least seeing oh, increased savings over their so. traditional yeah. tank. Awesome. That's really cool. So there's some really cool rebates out there that incentivize installing a heat pump water heater. And Ream has made it really easy to find those rebates based off of your zip code. So go to reamenergysavings.com if you're a homeowner. And if you're a pro like me, you can go to reamenergysavings.com forward slash pro. So you can look up rebates that are available. And of course, there are some federal rebates that are going to be ending at the end of 2025. So you want to uh, look into this sooner than later so you can take it full advantage of the money that's out there to make this installation a little less expensive. Absolutely. All right, Brian, let's get into some tips and tricks. We're going to talk about some features that we promised them <laughs> at the beginning of the video, right? Yeah. I know as an installer, uh, but maybe not everybody else does know that we do have a few installation parameters we have to keep top of mind when we talk about installing a heat pump water heater. Number one is volume of space when we put it in there. They've, they've seen me talk about these uh, in various videos over the years, and they've seen my installation videos too. Generally speaking, we need about 750, 800 cubic feet mm -hmm. of space that's in correct. the room. So think of a room that's 10 feet tall, it's seven by 10. That's 700 cubic feet. Now we want a little bit more if we can get that, but we need that amount of space, that volume, to have the correct amount of energy that we can supply this so we can operate it in a heat pump mode. Because what's happening, like we talked about at the beginning of the video, we're pulling energy out of the air. A byproduct of that is what? Exhaust. Exhaust, exhaust cooler, cooler air, air. Yeah. yeah. So we're gonna suck in air into this heat pump and it's gonna blow out dehumidified cooler air. Correct. And yeah. we need that volume so that we don't deplete all the energy in, a, in its normal operating run time. So we can keep this thing in heat pump mode as long as possible. So bigger spaces, even better. We talked about it a minute ago in the video, but if you could install this thing outside, if you lived in Arkansas or Florida or wherever it might be warm enough to do that, I don't pretend to know that because I've never lived there. <laughs> but I mean, we can't do that here. But a lot of water heaters are installed in warmer climates, maybe in an attic or outside. That's fantastic. Still got to think about the volume and, and energy space. Now you talked about a minute ago how this has a couple different features, leak detection, water shut off. Can you talk about this electrical connection on top? Yeah, that's a, a CTA adapter. So if you're, if you need to hook it up to a utility, like for demand. Switching it from the, the if the utility has a Yeah, like utility. a grid enabled system for yeah. demand response. Yeah, yeah, this is where you'd hook that up. And um, the other thing I was going to talk about was, you know, so Ream has come out with the ductability concept with the heat pump water heater. And that's where you're gonna be bringing in air directly to the unit with, with a duct vent. And so they have these tabs that you can basically fold out and connect your duct work right, right to it. So you can bring you in, you can bring right in your cold air from another room if you want, and then you can exhaust the air back into your return system or whatever. But yeah. that's a very nice feature on this. Makes it easier. You don't have additional adapter kits that you would have to buy. That's really smart from an installer's point of view because leading up to this new model that they're, they've got on the market now, we did have to buy like an adapter, a duct adapter, which was a, something else as a contractor I had to make sure I had in my shop sure. or they had in stock when I ordered the water heater. Uh, additional expense. So that's actually has saved me as an installer money, oh, yeah. which I can I can turn over to my homeowner. Yeah, the other thing they added just recently was top connects. So you can you have uh, hot and cold water connections on the side of the unit or on the top. 
and you just plug the ones that you don't use, but that gives it some versatility or installation wise. I like that a lot. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Especially here in Minnesota, we're working in basements primarily with a water heater like this. So we've, we've got piping coming in from the top. And if this isn't too tall from where that piping access is, usually coming out of the ceiling, we're yeah. going to prioritize. We're going to just hook up to the Absolutely. top. It makes it way easier. Right. Right. Less fittings, less pipe than having, being forced to. Because years ago, that was our only option was the side connection. Correct, yeah. yeah. One other thing, if you're a contractor uh, with these ream heat pump water heaters, is the ability to lay it on its side for transport. If you need to lay it on its side, it's, it's totally okay to do that. They've got a totally enclosed uh, sealed system with, with check With the refrigerant valve. and the compressor. Yeah, so for the refrigerant, so that, you know, when you get it to your site and stand it up, it's ready to go right then. You don't have to let it sit for 24 hours before it's ready to, to start. I which like is a that. very nice feature. I like that, especially for us that don't have, we're not working out of box trucks, maybe a trailer, things like that, where you've got a little less concern about headroom. We get into the larger models, the 65, the 80 gallon, they become very physically large, very tall and hard to fit into our service vans. Also harder to handle too. So if we can lay these things down, as we've been used to with a lot of different types of tank water heaters over the years, right. it can make for a lot easier transport from either our wholesaler or from our shop to the installation site, our homeowners. That's really nice. When we unpackaged this, guys, there was some really cool packaging that made it stabilized inside of the box, which mm -hmm. was Significant. We didn't. We haven't always seen that, and so that's, I've seen that. So it's a nice improvement. Mm -hmm. Pretty cool. And then, of course, maintenance purposes. There is an air filter involved. It's a very high flow air filter. It's just made to kind of collect some uh, yeah. dust that might come in, or if you're ducting this from the outside or from another space, anything that might be caught up in this, it's going to help protect the operation of the sure. heat pump inside oh, absolutely. of it. One thing you got to know about heat pumps, guys: condensate management. So when we're pulling energy out of the air, we're really dehumidifying it really mm -hmm. we yep. talked about that a minute ago it's like There's a dehumidifier a, in your yeah basement. it's yeah. like a dehumidifier in your basement and we're going to pull that humidity it's got to go somewhere it's going to go into the form of uh, water vapor and actually condense into water and we've got a drain right here on the front so it needs to be run to in most traditional applications like a floor drain right right not anything really that you have to worry about it's not like a combustion appliance where we have to neutralize that condensate. oh right exactly. it's just it's just condensate it's condensed humidity from the atmosphere all collected in one spot. There's a drain pan here. We do need to pipe that over to a floor drain. Nothing crazy, but it's something to think about. So right. you need yeah. to know, you need to know that if you're installing this where there may not be a floor drain, you might have to pump it to a, a different location. Right. right. Yeah. Right. And so there, there you go, guys. I like uh, a couple things I always like to point out in the videos, quality components. So I, I'm looking at this and I see dielectric nipples on the top, which is important. So it makes piping mm -hmm. it really easy. It's traditional. We see it on uh, tank water ears. We come to expect it from Ream. But we see uh, installed, this, is, this was all here. We didn't have to do anything. This was literally taken out of the box right before the video. We got a uh, brass TMP or temperature and pressure relief valve already installed on the tank. That's mm -hmm. nice. It's, a couple minutes less of work for me to do. And then I can rely on that connection being watertight. And you've got brass connections and a brass ball drain on yep. the bottom of the water heater, which is real nice. An upgrade over what we've seen on some models in the industry that might have a plastic drain. Right. As a right. plumber, I don't want that plastic drain. No, I want the brass exactly. ball, yeah. ball drain. <laughs> Very nice, guys. So check it out. Check out. And I want to say thanks for Reem uh, to supplying this, giving us an opportunity to make this video. Check out the rebates that are available to you in your area at reamenergysavings.com. Brian, thanks so much, man. You I betcha. really appreciate it. Learned a lot in this video myself. I do appreciate it. Guys, thanks for watching. If you haven't already, subscribe to the Build Show newsletter. It goes to your email inbox twice a week. You get a notification when all the cool videos come out. I'm Eric Ani from at Mechanical Hub over on Instagram. And I want to thank you guys for watching. Have a good one.